What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Simply Car Things YouTube channel. As you can see right behind me, we have this gorgeous 2021 BMW G82 M4 finished in black sapphire metallic over the Fiona red interior. And the best thing about this car is that it's a six speed manual equipped model. Now today we actually got our hands on a set of G82 specific H&R lowering springs for the vehicle and we are going to be installing them courtesy of my buddy Tyler who's going to be aiding with the installation process and I will be narrating as well as documenting the process for you guys as well as showing you guys the before and after difference of the right height change. Now the only modification that has been done to this car if you'll even consider it a mod is wheel spacers. Unfortunately I do not know the specific size of the wheel spacers off the top of my head but if you are curious I will have them listed in the description box down below when I go in to edit this video. Now with all that being said guys please make sure to go ahead and leave a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the channel down below if you have not done so already and let's not waste any more time and let's dive right into this install. Alrighty, so the first and most obvious step when performing the install of the H&R lowering springs is to remove the wheels and tires off the vehicle. So you have five 17 millimeter lug bolts which are going to be taken off. Next we're going to be using an E10 female Torx bit to remove that sensor that is attached to the strut. And then following that, we're going to be using a 16 millimeter socket to remove the nut that attaches the sway bar end link to the front strut as well. And from there, you can go ahead and detach the sway bar end link. Next up, we're going to move to the top of the engine bay where you're going to see a bunch of pop tabs. Uh, here, Tyler's using this handy little tool that just easily allows them to just come right off and you're going to be able to take the plastic cover off. There's also going to be another like locking plastic tab. You just twist it uh, basically counterclockwise to unlock it and it's even labeled. Uh, you'll see like when you're going to install it on your own car and the plastic covers will basically just pop right off. Once you remove all those, you're going to need to remove the EDC sensor on the top of the strut. And basically it's just a little uh, plastic tab you just push down on and then from there you just detach it. And so now that the EDC sensor has been removed from the top of the strut, we can go back down to the underside of the car and you're basically going to support the lower control arm with a small jack. From there, you'll return back to the top of the car and you'll be using a 12.19 millimeter deep socket to remove that top nut. Now that that's been removed, there's gonna be a couple various sensors and a brake line that are attached to a little bracket on the backside of the strut. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and detach all of those from the bracket because when you go down to actually remove the strut and take the spring out, you don't wanna accidentally stretch out or tear any of those wires. Now we can go ahead and basically just lower that jack down and as you can see the entire suspension assembly drops right out, no problem. From here it is recommended to have a second set of hands to potentially um, support the suspension assembly which you can see is being done right here and then have that second person uh, basically remove the spring and bump stop and the dust boot as well. Now here we have our H&R lowering springs. We're just gonna be doing a quick little unboxing of them for you guys. It's a pretty nice kit overall, nothing too special or crazy, but H&R I would say is a, a pretty high quality, you know, street suspension brand and everything is made in Germany and they have a pretty good reputation overall. Now from here the kit does come with new bump stops so you'll just go ahead and slide the bump stop onto the strut like so and then from there you'll go ahead and attach the spring. Now you can see on the bottom there's a little like rubber grommet and it has a little notch at the end so you kind of twist it into place and the spring will basically kind of like lock itself in. And then from there you'll go ahead and reuse the OEM dust cover which slides right over the new bump stop and will also sit on top of the spring. It has like a little notched end as well, so everything kind of fits into place nicely. 
Now once that's done, you can go ahead and take the entire suspension assembly and realign and reinsert it back into the car. It'll be a combination of wiggling it back into the top as well as raising the jack once again from the bottom to sort of lift the suspension assembly back into the strut tower. Once that's been done, you can go ahead and reinsert that 19 millimeter 12 point. Go ahead and tie it back down again. Go ahead and reattach your EDC sensor. Basically, it's essentially a reversing all the steps that you did to undo everything. Reattach the various plastic liners and covers, which are fastened either by those pop tabs or like I had mentioned previously, there's a little twist tab that's already on the plastic piece and it's labeled. Um, you just put it back on and you twist it to lock it. And like I said, it's labeled so you know which position is locked and which position is unlocked. Another thing to note is that the EDC sensor uh, slides under the strut tower bracing, so make sure it's not placed over the brace because um, you don't want it to be exposed and potentially like get snagged on something. And then there's also a small little bracket that it seats onto. After using the jack to lower the suspension assembly, you can see Tyler right here is just readjusting the bump stop and the dust boot just to make sure that everything is seated properly. And you can also at this point realign the sway bar end link back to the front strut and then go ahead and reattach the nut via the 16 millimeter socket. And then from there, all those brake lines, the different sensors that were previously attached to the strut are gonna be reattached once again. And you're gonna attach everything to that little bracket uh, that kind of sits behind. It's kind of hard to pick it up on camera because it's literally on the opposite end of the strut, but you'll see when you end up going down there to work on the car for yourself. Unfortunately, guys, I could not find the official torque specs anywhere uh, for the suspension components on the G80 or the G82. I think that's just dealer info that you would probably have to contact the dealer for, or maybe it's in the owner's manual for the car somewhere. Um, but in terms of just searching online, I think the platform is just a little bit too new at the moment where any of the torque specs are listed. So just tighten everything down pretty well. Um, that's what I would say to do. A lot of the suspension components are pretty tight as is. So, you know, just give them a good, a good tightening and I, I think you should be fine.
And once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and remount the wheels and reinsert those 17 millimeter lug bolts. They're gonna be torqued to 101 foot pounds. That is a torque spec I do know actually for this car. And because they are conical style wheel bolts, make sure you do torque them down in a star pattern. And that about wraps it up for the front. So moving over to the rear, it's gonna be the same process with removing the wheel, five 17 millimeter lug bolts that are gonna come off. Now the rear suspension setup is a little bit more simple by design due to the divorced nature of the rear suspension assembly so the shock and spring are two separate pieces they're not attached all as one like in the front so the first step you're gonna to want to do is take your small jack and go ahead and support the lower control arm of the rear suspension assembly next up we're gonna go ahead and remove the outer lower control arm bolts there is a 21 millimeter nut that is going to be removed and the back side of that bolt will also need to be counter held with a wrench and it's gonna be the same thing for the inner lower control arm bolts. This one is actually pretty damn tough because it's on there really tight and you don't have a lot of room to gain good leverage with. So what we did was actually wedged an adjustable wrench in an angle that basically got caught with the lower frame brace. And then from there used the uh, jack handle over a ratchet wrench to essentially just break it loose. And then from there, uh, there was finally enough um, wiggle room and leverage to start backing that bolt out. But it, it is a little tricky, especially if you don't have access to a lift. And it is a very long bolt, so it is going to take a while to get it out. And then from there, you can see that when you go ahead and lower the jack, the control arm swings down without issue. And now you have access to swap out that spring. Now from here, go ahead and just change out the little mount on the lower and upper portion of the spring. You're just swapping everything over. The new H&R lowering spring goes right back in. And from there, you can go ahead and begin lifting the jack up once again to support the lower control arm assembly and sort of realign it with the rear subframe of the car. And from there, you just basically reverse the process. Getting that inner lower control arm bolt to fit can be a little bit tricky because the clearance when you're lining up the lower control arm with the rear subframe can be a bit difficult. So you're going to use a combination of the jack along with like a flathead screwdriver or something to really just kind of play around and wiggle it. But once it's in, you can kind of tap it with a mallet and, and once it's in, it's in. And then from there, you can go ahead and tighten everything down. That's pretty much it. Go ahead and reattach the wheel. Same torque spec, 101 foot pounds. Torque in a star pattern and you're good to go.